If you've got this Runcam Wi-Fi Link OpenIPC video receiver, then you're gonna wanna update the firmware on it. No ifs, ands, or buts. No waffling. You wanna update the firmware on it. Runcam shipped it with the latest firmware that was available at the time that they manufactured the hardware, and OpenIPC is a fast-moving open source project that is constantly improving, and that means that the firmware you got from Runcam is not the firmware that's gonna give you the best performance. And in fact, according to the developers and the people in the community, the latest firmware is significantly better. So, in this video, we're gonna go over how to flash firmware to this Runcam Wi-Fi Link video receiver. And you might think it would be simple. And the steps in the manual are simple, but it took me a lot of screwing around to get to the point where I could do it reliably. And so maybe you'll have the same experience, except you're not gonna have the same experience because I'm gonna show you how to do it. And it's gonna be totally easy and straightforward with no problems whatsoever. Well, <laughs> you, you'll let me know at the end of the video in the comments section. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. I wanna to start by acknowledging that everything I'm gonna show you is in the manual for the Runcam Wi-Fi Link VRX, which is right here at the bottom of the product page. Uh, and this is the manual we're gonna be following, and we are gonna be flashing Ruby FPV to this device. Um, there are different front ends that you can use to interface with OpenIPC hardware. Uh, the actuality of it is more complicated than we'll get into here, but this is OpenIPC hardware and it has OpenIPC libraries and core code. And then on top of it is a sort of a user interface, but it also is defining the air protocol. And the bottom line is we're gonna flash Ruby FPV to this. And the reason we're doing that is twofold. Number one, it is what Runcam recommends and it is what I believe Runcam is shipping on this hardware. And number two, Ruby FPV has a really mature interface that makes it so much easier to use than any of the alternatives, at least as far as I've seen. I do have to acknowledge, well, the folks on the uh, Ruby FPV and OpenIPC Telegram group would yell at me if I didn't acknowledge that there are better performing firmwares that you can put on this hardware that are way harder to configure and tune, but if configured and tuned, will give much better results. At least that's what they tell me. But Ruby FPV, I think, is the one that many people are gonna be using. It's the one that I find easiest to use, and it's the one I'm gonna show you how to flash. And if you wanna flash something else, this video still will show you how to do it. You'll just be flashing a different file. The first thing you need to do is go to this Google Drive link, which I will put in the video description below for your convenience. This is an archive made by Runcam of some publicly available tools and drivers that are used to flash the hardware that's in this Wi-Fi Link VRX. The file is named driverandtool.zip, and you're gonna go ahead and download that. The other thing you're gonna do is go to the Ruby FPV downloads page. And again, I'll put a link in the video description below and you're gonna download for the latest version. In this case, it's 11.1 .1 at the time that I'm making this. You're gonna download the Runcam Emacs VRX full image. And here it is, Ruby image Radix 3 ew 11.1.zip. .1 Once you've done that, you're gonna extract these files onto your hard drive. Right click, extract all, or however you manage zip files. And inside the driver and tool folder, you're gonna find driver assistant V50. This is gonna install some drivers on your computer. This assumes that this is a Windows computer. This is, oh, if you have Mac OS, I don't know if you can do this. Maybe there's equivalent tools for Mac OS, but this is a Windows tutorial, sorry. Should have told you that up front. You're gonna run the driver assistant and it is going to install a driver on your computer. I'm not gonna do that right now because I've already done it, but you're gonna go ahead and run that and it will install the driver. After we've installed the driver, we'll go into the RK DevTool folder and we will run rkdevtool.exe. We'll get a warning. That's okay. We're going to run anyway and it will come up like this. We need to point the RK DevTool at two files. One of them is a bootloader and one of them is the firmware image. So on this first line where it says loader, we're going to click right here in this little box uh, underneath the three dots and we are going to go into the driver and tool folder and in there is RK356X SPI loader, yada, yada, yada. We're gonna select that and open. For the second file, which is labeled EMMC here and image, and this should all be done by default, uh, we're gonna click and we're gonna choose the Ruby image Radix 3 ew 
.img file. Again, you must have extracted that from the zip file. You do not select the zip file itself. You select the .img file, although the software will let you select the zip file and try to upload it. It just won't work. Once we've done that, we need to put the ground station into flashing mode. If it was a flight controller, we would call it bootloader mode, but that's not what they call it. And the way to do that was one of the most complicated things to figure out because you would think you like hold down the button and then apply power and you kind of do, but there's a timing to it that has to be kind of exactly right or it doesn't work. Here's what you do. First, get a battery or other power source ready to go. Second, press this button and hold it in. And while holding it in, apply power. And then after you apply power, count two seconds and then release the button and then quickly plug in USB. And I can do this pretty reliably but if you screw up the timing, it kind of doesn't work and you just have to start over and do it again until you get the timing right. So hold in the button, apply power. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, release the button and plug in USB. And I always feel like a little bit of a hurry to plug in USB because I think if you wait too long, you miss the window and it doesn't work. I'm not 100% sure, but if you hold the button too long, it seems like it doesn't work. So just do exactly what I did there and uh, by the way, make sure you plug into the type C port, not the OTG port. And then what you should see is in this RK dev tool, you have one mask ROM device and that's what they call bootloader mode or DFU mode or whatever. That's what they call the firmware flashing mode for this device. Once you've done that, you're ready to flash. You have to select write by address here and then you hit run and it flashes. And I kind of don't want to do that because I've actually got this set up exactly how I like it. And when I flash it, it's going to erase all of that. But I'm going to do it for you so you can see me do it and we can all agree that it works. Here we go. While it's flashing, can I take a moment to tell you about my Patreon? Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me. If you value the content that I'm making here, the tutorials and so forth that help you not have to go through three days of BS trying to figure out how to flash this thing and all the things I did wrong that I'm not showing you because I'm just showing you the right way to do it. If you value that, why would you value that? I'm saving you all this time. You have no idea how much pain you're missing out on. But if you do value that, join my Patreon. As little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. However much you think I'm worth, go to my Patreon in the link below and subscribe. I would love to have you as a supporter. If today's the day that you're like, damn, Bard, well, okay, I've been trying to do this and you finally got me over the hump, I head on down to the link. And if today's not the day and you're like, damn, I'm just trying to get this done. Stop asking me for support. I've already fast forwarded this. That's cool. I don't mind. I'm just going to keep making content, trying to earn it. And eventually you'll decide I've earned it. Maybe. 42%, 43%, we'll just, we'll just fast forward to the end. While it's finishing flashing, can I tell you another big reason that you really wanna do this? Because here's the thing, you don't actually have to flash firmware to the internal memory, the EMMC on this device. You can actually just put an image file on an SD card and then put the SD card in the device and boot it up and it'll run, it'll run off the SD card. You don't have to flash this, except Runcam disabled that functionality. Why? I don't know, but they did. As soon as you flash this with the regular firmware, not the Runcam firmware, you'll be able to just put something on an SD card and run it. And maybe I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, and that's a big deal because there are lots of different firmware. We're putting Ruby FPV on this, but there's are better performing firmwares like WF BNG, whatever that is. It's an alternative to Ruby FPV and it's supposed to perform even better. Oh my God, it finished. So if you want to try those things out, you can just leave your perfectly good working config here in the EMMC memory, try your new fancy thing on an SD card. And when you're done, you just take the SD card out, boom, you're back restarted. That's pretty freaking cool. Well, we're not going to go into that on this video because that's not what this is about. Now that we've done this, let's just power cycle the unit. And I guess I'm gonna need to plug in HDMI to my computer. It's already working. It's gonna go through some updates. Like the very first startup, it'll go through some updates and configuration, but this is basically it. It's basically working. We've succeeded. Yay us. Now, if you've put Ruby FPV onto your ground station, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is put Ruby FPV on your video transmitter. And the nice thing is that if you've got the Runcam Wi-Fi link video transmitter, it already comes from Runcam 
with Ruby FPV on it. And Ruby FPV has the ability to do over the air firmware updates. So the minute you connect to the video transmitter, it will just offer to push the firmware and you don't need to do any, like put something on an SD card, put it in, hold down a button or any of that nonsense. Another cool thing about Ruby FPV that for all I know, other things have it too. And they're mad that I'm not mentioning them, but I can only talk about what I know and that's what I know. And there we go, we have Ruby FPV. The next thing I wanna do is take you through the initial setup of the system and some of the optimization of some of the parameters based on the generous input given to me by the folks over on the OpenIPC Telegram channel, including the Ruby FPV developer himself. And yes, there's just one of them. <laughs> Isn't that something? So I'm gonna plug in here and I think that it will not pick up my drone. This drone has previously been like connected to this ground station, but since I've flashed, I think it has forgotten. And, and I'm just going to click the joystick and go down to search and start search and see if it finds my vehicle. I think it should. You may be thinking about the gs.key file that you had to move around between your devices when you were using whatever I was using before Ruby, which I don't know the name of. I would call it OpenIPC, but I have been told that that's not right. It's not open, OpenIPC is, all of this is OpenIPC. And then anyway, whatever, this Ruby FPV doesn't do gs.key, it does something else. And look, it's found. Connect for control, it's found the vehicle. We'll just connect for control and it is connected, yay. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your on-screen display working. And uh, you probably don't need me to tell you how to set up a high definition digital OSD in Betaflight, but just in case you do, what, I, what you should do is go to the presets tab and search for O3 and just load OSD for FPV, WTF, DJI O3 and Avatar HD. And you need to know what UART number your video transmitter is connected to. Uh, when you click that, you will choose that UART number here and you will hit pick and then save and reboot. Mine's already set up, so I'm not gonna do that. Here in the ports tab, you will then see that for that UART number, in my case, it's UART3, MSP will be enabled and MSP plus DisplayPort will be enabled. What you'll then do is go to quick vehicle setup, go down and make sure that FC telemetry type is set to MSP OSD and check the telemetry port. And that should be set to whichever UART number your uh, MSP is on, except mine is on UART three and it says serial two. And I think that's because this is zero indexed. Do you see that it says starts with serial zero? So that would be UART one. Serial one would be UART two, serial two would be UART three. It's selected serial two. I think it's selected that automatically, but I'm not sure that that wasn't carried over from a previous config. So if your Betaflight OSD isn't working, make sure that that is select, set to the serial port that your air unit is on minus one. When that's set correctly, that should mean that your OSD is working. You just need to go in the Betaflight configurator to the OSD tab, and you need to actually set up the OSD. It should already be set to HD here, and the size of the screen should automatically match the size of the, uh, the, the goggle screen. Once that's done, the next thing I would have you do is go to full vehicle settings and general, and make sure that the board type that you see here matches your air unit. Uh, in my case, I have the Runcam V2 air unit, but it, for some reason, mistakenly got picked up as a Mario AIO, and if that is incorrect, then the output power levels that you see in the menu won't correctly match the VTX's output power. So we wanna make sure that is correctly set to Runcam V2, which is our air unit. You're gonna wanna select a channel that has the cleanest possible uh, bars here on this widget. So what you're looking for is as little red as possible and as much white and green as possible. In fact, the amount of red that you're seeing here is even like un abnormally high. Uh, and I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because we're indoors and there's a lot of Wi-Fi and computers and shit, or maybe I'm just on the wrong channel and I need to change channels to find a cleaner channel. But you're gonna wanna go around and find the cleanest channel that you can, and that's gonna give you the best possible performance. Um, and so you can do that by going to Quick Vehicle Setup and changing your radio link frequency. Uh, be aware that your antennas are probably tuned for like 5.6 to 5.8 gigahertz. So if you go all the way down here to 5.2 or 5.1, 
gigahertz, you may, number one, get very poor performance from your antennas, and number two, it may not be legal for you to do that. It probably isn't legal for you to use all of these frequencies. So keep that in mind, but you're going to want to find the cleanest channel that you can, and that is, you're going to go fly and have a good time. And that's going to do it for this video. Uh, would you like to learn more about the actual real-world performance of this Runcam Wi-Fi link using Ruby FPV? Uh, I've got a video about that. I'll put a link in the video description and a card on screen. Enjoy.